Yeah, I'm still sort of focused on uh, the money making side of you. And uh, because I think that's a lot of what's in your book. And, uh, and certainly your podcast is very f focused on that. Yes. Uh, and so again, I'm wondering about your family. I part of my career has been in, in the world of market research. And I asked a couple of uh, Jewish friends, as it happens, uh, mm. who seem to be just very easy. At, at, you know, I asked one of them, well, how did you learn to make money? Well, I don't know. I just, it's always been easy for me. Uh, how come? Well, I had an uncle who had a, a, a dry cleaning business. Uh, another fr uh, market research friend, a woman, I asked her that question. Well, my family had a store. So they kind of grew up in an environment with role models uh, where I guess it was both sanctioned, it was okay, there were, there were not taboos against making money. Um, so I'm just wondering if, you know, if you have any what's, of that sort of thing going on. What, in what, yeah, so I mean, what's interesting for me uh, is my relation, I had a very unhealthy relationship with money growing up. Um, because my, my father was, um, really, really anxious, um, all the time. I, I, you know, my memories of, uh, you know, my father and he's still alive, but I'm saying growing up was, uh, you know, just a lot of terrible, terrible anxiety around money, always worrying about how much money he has and about, he had, um, he had a few shops, a few stores that he owned and, uh, he would always talk about how, you know, this, I didn't understand cause I was so young. So I didn't understand exactly what he would, but I can tell that anytime he talked about money or about business, you can see he, he was just so stressed out and it caused me anxiety and it made me feel very uncomfortable. And, and just to give you an example, yeah, we were once on a family vacation in Spain. We were staying in this beautiful villa with a swimming pool, um, you know, the ocean and everything. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. uh, per the perfect, you know, sort of, you know, getaway. And I will, I'll never forget this. Um, we were at a restaurant and my father takes, and this is a typical thing that would happen. Um, and he, he took out the menu and he just looked at the prices and he said, Oh God, why is it so expensive? You know, it's so funny. We really spent so much money on this and this. And my mother, she turned around and said, well, you know, I'm easy going. Let's go, let's go somewhere else. We'll, we'll go somewhere cheaper. <clears throat> and my father would turn around. No, no, no. We're here now. We're here now. We're not going. No, no, no. Forget it. Whatever. And then I'll, I'll keep complaining about the overpriced food. Now I was young. And so, in my mind, I was thinking, well, why are you so just, I would much prefer to be on, you know, on the floor eating sandwiches as long as my father's happy. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, so what that did for me was it created almost like this money's evil, money's the enemy because money stole my father from me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Powerfully stated. And yet it's interesting that it's, um, that it's as big a focus in your life now as it is. So in some way you've managed to transform your relationship with money. Yes. Yeah. Well, so. but, well you, you know, it's, it's almost like uh, if you imagine someone riding a horse, and the horse is, you know, running all over the place and, you know, it's hungry, so it'll go and eat and it wants to go to the bath. It, it basically takes the, the, the rider everywhere it wants to go. Um, if the rider learns how to control the animal, because at the end of the day, you know, the rider is, in, is, is the master of the horse. And so once he learns how to control and master his horse, then the horse goes where he wants to go. And it's the same thing with money. If money is the master, then you'll be thrown around like a ragged doll by money. 